In the world of video games, everybody has had to endure a shitty game once or twice in their lifetime. I myself have endured Back to the Future multiple times. But if you like shitty games, and not a lot of us do, then this game is for you. That's why I know I did a let's play of Angry Beginner Adventures, and now it's time for a nerd style review. When you first begin the game, you hear an 8-bit rendition of the theme song, which is pretty cool, and you get to select from three difficulty modes, easy, normal, and old school. Granted, they're still all forgiving considering that it can be a frustrating game, but let's see how we do on old school. It starts off nerdy enough. The nerd and his friends are playing a shitty game, would you expect anything less, but then the TV begins to suck everybody in, and even though the nerd tries to escape, a giant mechanical arm comes out and grabs him by the balls. Good god, that hurts. To begin, we're in an interstage, kind of like those from Mega Man X games. But unfortunately, we gotta put up with Nagi the patronizing Firefly, a direct ripoff of Navi from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. My god, it even says, hey listen. I mean, this thing is so fucking annoying, you know what I like to do to it? Yeah, take that, you little pixie fuck! But in all honesty, Nagi's not all that bad. She does give you a couple of good key points of advice, and you get introduced to power-up items. As you can see, I can throw rocks, which suck. The Glitch Gremlin freezes everything in place, and Super Mecha Death Christ obliterates everything. Power Christ compels you, bitch! And once you've done that, you get to select from eight stages, each with its own challenges and difficulty factors. Let's start with Assylvania. Okay, while this is not the most difficult stage in the game to start with, it's not the easiest either. But it's all fun. If you close your eyes, you'd swear you're in a Castlevania game. Now these zombies are actually not enemies you want to face right after that. Oddly enough, because they may seem like weak enemies, but they take a hell of a lot of shots to bring down. And hold on, time out, time out. Stop the video. Stop it. What is that? Is that the moon from Majora's Mask? Oh come on, this is a Castlevania theme level. What were they thinking? But now that I think about it, the nerd did review Zelda games on his channel, so I guess it's okay. Now even though there is an abundance of stables from the Castlevania series in this level, case in point, the crushing chandeliers right here, and the ghosts that move on metallic like Medusa heads, they're the least of your troubles. These disappearing, reappearing death blocks are what is gonna get ya. The green ones aren't so bad, because there's an outline showing where they're gonna be, and they flash slow enough. But the yellow and red ones, there's no outline, and they flash much faster. You need to be really careful with your movements, and you need to be on your toes. Ah, damn it! Shit, soup! Okay, if you're patient enough to get through that madness, you can find some pretty cool stuff later on. There's a shit pickle on every level, and this level, you get your first sh chance to shoot the Super Scope 6. Oh yeah. Most enemies will die in one shot, bigger ones, two or three. But if you get hit once, you lose it. Good gravy. Next up is Thy Farts Consumed, the Hell Level. Lots of fire blasters and flaming skulls, and our first meeting of the Cucka Demon, a monster that spews shit. Lots of laser guns to worry about, and of course, the Fire Shark. First things first, you gotta shoot this thing and tame it. Then, you get the best thing in the whole game. You get to ride the laser shark at high speed and shoot everything out of the way. These lasers are high powered. It rips the bricks, makes these cocka demons seem like nothing. Forget the Great White. Mine can shoot lasers. I win, you lose, period. At the end of all this madness, who else to face but the devil himself? That's right, folks, the very same demon that was exorcised from a possessed cartridge of Super Mario Bros. 3. This thing's not too bad, I mean, it doesn't have any attacks, just moves up and down in a wavy pattern. But then these death blocks start getting in your way. If you're not careful, you're dead. See? But be persistent, and keep pulling the trigger. You do, and this thing will go down like the bitch that it is. Smile, asshole! Now, Happy Fun Candy Time could be the result of either one of two things. First being, a unicorn having severe diarrhea, or the programmers being on crack, as the nerd just pointed out. Both instances. Why is everybody smiling? Well, the only reason I'm smiling right now is because this is probably the first stage you're gonna find your cameos. There are tons and tons of YouTube personalities to find here. If you find them, they'll give you guns, they'll give you fear, they'll give you free lives, and they might even give you Super Mecha Death Christ. Now this level seems easy enough, I mean, simple platforming, but watch this, you can really glitch this game out and it causes you nothing but problems. I mean, look at that right there! I fall all the way back down and that smiley fuck hits me. Alright, now this is easy enough. 
Hop, skip, and jump! Ass! And why is everybody smiling? I mean, these things... Why are they smiling? Oh, I know, it's because these assholes are gonna gang up and try and kill me! Jesus Christ, give me a break, you two! Now, one nice thing I can say about this level, and believe me, I don't have a lot of nice things to say about this level. These giant floating heads are reminiscent of the heads you find in Mega Man 2, Air Man stage. If you ask me, and now a lot of people do, if you throw Mega Man 2 references anywhere, it'll make things a whole hell of a lot better, because... Mega Man 2 is one of the best games of all time. It always puts a smile on my face. Which is more than I can say about these guys. Now look at that! Jumping purple testicles. Disgusting! And I can't really say much for the boss, either. I mean, it's a giant flying rainbow unicorn. It flies in a figure eight, it drops flowers and smiley faces. This thing is just awful. Motherfucking awful. Okay, now this is a level I really dig. Future Fuckballs 2010. It's like something out of Mega Man 1 and 2 combined. You've got the disappearing, reappearing jumping blocks, which are obviously a staple in the Mega Man series. And the background looks like something out of Bomb Man stage. But it's not all fun games. See these spinning gears? You gotta spin them into place, and then you gotta let go and just coast your way. It's not too difficult, right? Well, it gets worse. Much worse. Look at this. You hit the gear, you can go right into the death block. Beginner trap, obviously. Alright, let's get this guy out of the way. Nothing but smooth sailing through calm seas now. What the? Oh, you son of a bitch. What kind of asshole move is that? Are you serious? Ah, uh, that was just awful. Come on, give me some more credit here. I mean, I'm a pro gamer. If you're gonna treat me like that, oh, you didn't. The surfboard part. The only nice thing I can say is, at least you don't die in one hit. And now they're shooting giant dicks at me. Oh God. Cue the Austin Powers joke about the long smooth walk that looks like some guy's Johnson. And of course, the word you learn to fly, bitch. This thing's a real pain in the ass. First you gotta kill its babies, but then again, if you're not lucky. This thing will catch you on the backswing. But, I'll get you yet. Come on, come on. Yes! Take that and be gone. Jerk. And now we're off to Dungeons and Dickles, the fantasy theme level. It's made annoying by the fact that these guys take shits on you. Hm, what's down this ladder? No. No, they didn't. They didn't. The worst pitfall trap imaginable. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the only level in the game in which you gotta find keys and open locked doors. If I'm not mistaken, there's about four you need to bust open. Yeah, alright, now let's be on our way. Oh, great. More disappearing, reappearing blocks. Okay, this is getting really out of hand here. Oh, nice. Just what I've always wanted to do. Move through death blocks in narrow spaces. I'll throw some spikes on top of that. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. Oh, great question. What? Why is that beer there? How is anybody supposed to get that? Son of a... Oh, come on, I got stuck there! Fuck! Son of a bitch! Puke stain! Oh, come on! Move it, move it, move it! Ah! Ass! And if you get out alive, the nerd asks how you're supposed to get it, a la Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Remember how I said the super scope was powerful? Watch me rip this boss apart. It's no easy feat getting to the boss with the super scope, but if you do, consider yourself fortunate. It'll make things go by a lot smoother. Now onto Blizzard of Balls. This is a level in which you're gonna want to make use of a lot of your extra characters. The guys you can find include Mike, Guitar Guy, and the BS Man. Hmm. What's up here? Oh, now I definitely know who that is. That's Ego Raptor from Game Grumps. That is one fucking awesome appearance, man. Thanks. And of course, everyone's favorite thing about this level, if you ever received a shitty Christmas gift, take your frustration out on Santa Claus himself. Oh, but it gets even better. Now you get to use his body as a snowboard. Watch out for spikes, watch out for reindeer, and of course, watch out for the bomb gifts. Just keep a cool head, and you'll make it down in one piece. But then again, once you get to the bottom, it's boss time. The ghost of the past, present, and future. These guys are a pain in the ass, I swear. It's a simple enough pattern, but these guys really know how to run their shop, even without trying. With the nerd, aim guidely, and go for growth. They do take a bit of time to fight, though, so you really have to be patient. My sons of bitches. There you go. Now you're mine. Go back to the afterlife, and don't come back. 
Okay, level 7 is Beat It Needed, a tribute to the Atari porn games. As you can see, we've got dick spikes, guys with permanent hard-ons that bounce back and forth, giant bouncy boobs, and... Word of warning, wear a Kleenex on your feet. And of course, more of the disappearing, reappearing death blocks. And lots of them. But once you get past all that bullshit, you arrive at the VIP room where all the naked ladies are hanging out. But inside, the most vile, disgusting thing you can imagine. General George Armstrong Custer from Custer's Revenge. And as you can see, the native lady he's going to rape, so you gotta save her. Just watch out for his sperm shots and the arrow rain. And yeah, the floor's kind of slippery too, so keep that in mind. But unfortunately, I got myself a game over there. And look at that. If you really want to throw salt in the mood, just say that you're adopted and that you contracted HIV. Sheesh! Alright, now you're mine, you little bitch. Give me a game over, I give you death! Our final level of the main eight is Boo Haunted House, quite possibly the toughest of the bunch. This is definitely not one you want to play first, but, well, if you're a masochist, go for broke, but avoid this one until the very end. What makes this level so difficult is the fact that it's played entirely in tunnel vision. Parts of the floor are only visible if you get close enough to them, and there are death blocks like crazy. You might even need to alternate between your alternate players just to survive. To make matters worse, you've got these moving block sessions, which I despise with a passion. More like a raging boner. I mean, challenge is nice, but sometimes things can be a little too challenging. I mean, look at this! Got a pumpkin in my way! Okay, I don't know how I managed to survive that, but pretty cool. And this part takes the cake. Invisible death blocks, tunnel vision. Oh, it is just the stuff that nightmares are made of. But it gets much worse. The floor starts to fall beneath your feet, and you don't even have time to think, let alone breathe. So just keep moving, and you should be fine. Hopefully. And then there's this section with Mike, where you need his x-ray vision to get up here and find Shippickle. Just keep one thing in mind. Don't switch off of Mike when you're standing on the x-ray blocks, or else this will happen. Finally, after all that bullshit, you've got another section of invisible death blocks and breakaway floors. Once you get through here, it's boss time. The boss is known simply as Bimmy and Jimmy, after the infamous Double Dragon typo. In all actuality, it's Jason Voorhees with a chainsaw and a giant clawed hand that looks reminiscent of Freddy Krueger's famous knife glove. They're not too bad. I mean, it makes up for all the challenge that the level gives you, but they can still rough you up. And of course, when you defeat the boss, the nerd comes back with the best line. Up yours with a twirling lawnmower. Once all eight levels are done, one final challenge awaits. Laugh and joke and numbnuts, or LJN. This level is brutally unforgiving. It takes all that's been thrown at you thus far and amplifies it tenfold. I mean, you don't even have to go that far in level to suffer some very humiliating deaths. I mean, just watch how many times I die. There's one. There's two. There's three. And keep in mind, this is from poor judgment calls on my part. But even if you survive all that nastiness, guess what? It's Silver Surfboard time again. Unlike future fuckballs, there are a ton more obstacles that are shot your way, more enemies, not as many twists and turns, but it's still dangerous enough. Namely because of these wavy death blocks. Just do what I'm doing. Keep firing shots and you should be fine. I was actually pretty lucky to survive that entire ordeal, but once you're done, one final challenge, the boss. A mysterious shadow figure awaits in a dark room and he introduces himself as the programmer of Gameland, Fred Fox. And I really like this. The nerd actually makes fun of Fred Fox's name, which is pretty cool. At the start of the battle, he'll fly in a figure eight and shoot fireballs. You can essentially use anybody, but once you give him enough damage, he'll bring out mace balls to use as a shield. This is where a guitar guy will actually come in handy. Once he's down to about half health, he'll start trying to take a dump on you. If you want to, you could bring up the nerd and aim up to do some damage, but I prefer to use Guitar Guy myself. At one quarter left, he'll bring out the big mace ball, and then you know he's getting pissed off. Just keep shooting him, hit him with all you can. If you're using Guitar Guy, this should be actually be no problem. Enough hits, and Fred Fox will be fucked. And once he's gone, Game Land will start to explode. But before it does, the nerd and his friends are sent back to the real world, and it ends on a classic nerd note. What a shitload of fuck. All it does is suck you in. Only a total nerd would continue this. Amen, brother. 
So, in conclusion, this shit scene of the game is the epitome of all things evil. It's like taking a kick to the junk from a dumb donkey. I'd rather shove a red hot cactus up my ass and keep pumping away until I come blood on my eyes. That's how much this game chews you up and spits you out. But in all honesty, difficulty and frustration aside, Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures, it's really good. It's got tons of replayability, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And for those who are challenged or skilled enough to beat Whole School, another challenge awaits. That's right. If you thought Old School was as difficult as it gets, you are sadly mistaken. For beating Old School, you unlock the hardest balls difficulty. Two beers, five lives, and only three continues, and the enemies are a hell of a lot stronger. Only the truly skilled will be able to beat this one. I haven't tried it yet, but I don't like my chances. Well guys, this wraps up my review of the Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures. Thanks for watching the LP, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.